the Ascend Home team bringing peace to the process of buying and selling real estate. This is video number three of four in this series on living in a rural area in Southwest Washington for a more sustainable lifestyle. Each video covers different material, so you will definitely want to watch each one. It really doesn't matter what order you watch them in either. This is Joseph Nelson. I make educational videos relating to moving to and living in the Portland and Vancouver greater area. I am licensed as a realtor, a real estate broker in both Oregon and Washington. All of my contact information is shown below each video in the show more section. And whether you're a buyer or a seller, there is great benefit to contacting me as I attract tons of people from out of the area. So my reach and marketing actually attracts buyers to listings that really nobody else through the MLS is attracting. By far, the best way to contact me is to send me a text message. And that's also the most popular method. Okay, we're going to get started now with the content. The first topic is, do I build on raw land or do I buy an existing property and remodel? Later in the next video, number four, I'm going to talk about utilities. And you want to really listen to the one on septic system. If you plan on buying a property, especially that is a three-bedroom home now and you need a five-bedroom home, you're going to want to listen to the section on septic systems because it's not a simple process to enlarge a septic system. But as a general rule, it is less expensive to update and enlarge an existing home and home site than it is to develop one from raw land. Because there are hoops to jump through with land use and zoning, etc., that have already been jumped through by uh, previous uh, property owners, first of all. Uh, secondly, there are tons of considerations, and we're going to go through those right now. First of all, a well and septic system already existing that's in working order is worth somewhere in the vicinity of thirty to fifty thousand dollars. Roads are not cheap to establish. Getting power into the home site area is also expensive. All of these processes have become much more expensive th than they used to cost. Cost of fuel has driven all of these processes up in cost because they all involve large equipment. So personally, I would prefer to work with an existing home site as opposed to raw land, uh, especially from a cost perspective. Building a home on raw land should be considered a custom endeavor, especially the actual building of the home, unless you bring in a manufactured home and this is a pretty straightforward process, which is what most people do. The reality is going to dictate when you run the numbers that this is what most people can afford the square footage that they can get in a manufactured home compared to a stick built. When they run the numbers, the reality is going to dictate that most people are going to go with a manufactured home. There are contractors that specialize in hauling manufactured homes, setting up the foundation and uh, concrete supports for manufactured homes. And they have special little tractors for locating the manufactured home on the foundation. And this is all really boilerplate, um, easy, an easy process to do. But all the aforementioned utility, road work, et cetera, would all apply if you're developing a, uh, a new piece of property, the well, septic, road, and power. By the way, this is episode three, 2.0. As I had a senior moment on episode three, take one, proudly wearing my John Deere hat which is green, and you can see right now exactly what happens when I wear a green hat 
my John Deere free John Deere hat. Wow, a free hat. I spent $16,000 and got a free hat. Wow. <laughs> anyway, I shot a whole video wearing a green hat. And so now I'm redoing the whole video again. <laughs> so anyway, uh, just, you know, uh, I kicked myself in the rear, uh, got frustrated with myself and uh, a new day is upon us. And now I'm uh, feeling pretty good. Next thing I want to talk about is investigating crime and the social factors that are involved in uh, moving to a rural area. Geographic areas uh, where you're going to move uh, for self-sufficiency tend to have a wide variance uh, for social slash economic diversity. Some have pretty trashy looking and lowly maintained properties, and others have very upscale and very well-maintained properties. So why is this important, question mark? Well, from my perspective, this cycle is going to continue for a long period of time. And if you're starting in the cycle where you're in the middle or the lower side of that cycle, it's going to be a long time before uh, you see a change in this cycle. If you're starting at the top end of the cycle where there's uh, pride and ownership, it's going to take decades before uh, anything negative happens in this cycle. If you're starting at the lower end of the cycle where the floors are falling through on the homes and there's trash, people are not uh, can't afford to have garbage service, uh, they're not taking care of their homes, uh, it could be a decade or longer before anything happens and you're just living with less than desirable uh, neighbors. A lot of times these homes can become a source of crime and it's not uncommon for these people to ride out uh, the last, just to squeeze out everything they can out of these homes and live there long past the economic value of the home. And don't get me wrong, this can happen anywhere. It can happen in neighborhoods as well, especially if there are no homeowners associations, and most of the areas we're talking about in rural areas do not have homeowners associations. So it's important not only to uh, look at the areas on the drive in and out of the homes you're looking at, but to really take some time to drive and look at the surrounding roads and and really uh, drive every road that surrounds the, the subject property and get a feel for really the personality of the entire neighborhood. On a few of our searches, when we did some driving around, we got some really sour looks like, what are you doing here? And we were starting to listen for banjos to start playing, and it just felt uncomfortable. So there are also websites where you can get uh, statistics on crime. I get a um, an alert every week on crime statistics for the community that I live in, and there, there are very few. I have a friend who's in law enforcement, who used to work for Clark County, and he has a good handle on the region that we live, and his comment was, we used to get very few calls on the area that you moved to. I'm never afraid to speak to neighbors in an area that we are considering moving. I spoke to the neighbor next to the home we were considering buying, and we heard from them that they've, in 30 years that they've lived there, they have never had any property crime, and that was very encouraging. They did mention that one time they had some mail stolen, but that's at the mailbox out at the street, and their home is located as the subject property we were looking at a quarter mile from the street on a private road. And she suggested picking up the mail regularly. So that brings me to a uh, nugget that I want to share. And if you get nothing else from this video, uh, then th here's some value that you can take with you. The post office has what they call the USPS informed delivery. And we signed up for this. You can go onto their website and sign up. And each morning about 7.30, I get an email and there are pictures of every piece of mail that's coming that day. Most days, it's just a bunch of junk mail. And on those days, I may not even bother getting out of my car 
to walk to the mailbox to retrieve the mail. But there was a point where I was waiting for a new bank card. And when I saw a letter from my bank, I'm like, my bank card's coming today and I'm going to be Johnny on the spot. It also says that you're getting packages today and it gives you links uh, to Amazon and it will tell you what's coming. And this is a free service. And like Tom Peterson used to say, free is a very good price. We also have all of our bills delivered electronically from any vendor who offers that service. And we also pay automatically all of our bills that offer that service. So we can go a few days at times without ever looking in our mailbox because we know there's not going to be anything there of value. If somebody were to go into our mailbox and steal some mail, we know there's not going to be anything there of any value. Okay, there you go. Back to our main topic. Having a long driveway or private road that's dead end can be a good crime deterrent. People are less likely to case property when there's a dead end road. We um, are aware of all of our neighbors and there are four or five homes on our private road and we have become accustomed to the cars that come and go on that. And it's like, oh yeah, that's Bob and that's Sue. No worries. But if there's somebody driving slow and it's like, um, what are they doing here? But my point is that we are all pretty vigilant and it would be uncomfortable to drive down a private drive that's dead end and know that you're going to have to drive back out the way you came. We also have an electric opening gate so people can't just drive in or walk in. We get stuff from Amazon on average about four days a week and Light stuff, they can drop over the gate. Heavy stuff, they can leave in front of the gate. And we talk to the gal that delivers for the post office and give her farm fresh eggs when we have the opportunity to show our appreciation. We also have uh, some motion sensor LED lights, which come on at night if any motion is detected at the gate. So if somebody drives up to the gate at night, the lights come on. One night, the dog started barking, and we got up and looked out, and there were headlights at the gate. And it turns out that it was Amazon delivering a package at three o'clock in the morning. So that was the extent to the excitement that night. Okay, so stay tuned for video number four in this series. If you have any further questions, the last video topics are going to cover stick-built home or manufactured home. And we're going to cover a lot of information on manufactured homes because there's a lot of misconceptions about manufactured homes. We're going to talk about available utilities in rural areas. We're going to talk about financing your new rural lifestyle and purchasing equipment to help you with the workload on your new property. If you have any other questions that you would like included in this last video in the series, number four, put those down in the comment section. Comments and likes do help the algorithms that get these videos in front of other viewers like you. So this week, those are your assignments to comment and like. So with that, peace be with you and thank you for watching.